When I was driving to work this morning, I was listening to another radio station, as we broadcasters sometimes do. What I heard shocked and saddened me. The Entertainment Roundtable. They're here, nerds. Wait, is this the group that goes around mutilating squirrels? Well, you just mind your P's and Q's, buster, and remember who you're dealing with. Well, at least we found them. Fortuitous, Captain. And now that we have them all together, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. <laughs> the Entertainment Roundtable. They make one person go, blah, 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 and the other person goes, what are you talking about? And then one person goes, blah, 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 blah. Well, none of that last night, I can tell you that. We record on a Friday here at the Entertainment Roundtable. Last night, officially, we found ourselves going and checking out a fairly good film by all intents and measures. At least I think so. I guess we'll go around the table and figure out what everybody else's ratings were. Yes, we will. We'll talk about that momentarily. Hi, how are you? Hi. Yeah? I'm just shoving my way into this show. I know. I have no problem with that. That's David checking in over there on the side, and he's actually got himself some rest this time. Hiya. (laughs) Jeff, how are you, sir? I'm I'm surly. Surly? Nah, not Why? Really. I'm not. I just thought I'd I'd feel Dave choose tonight. Oh, okay. Do it. it. I hate it all. It's crap. <laughs> this is Freaky Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the changeover that we weren't expecting. Uh, on the phone, Jacob, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Wonderful. Be better day than yesterday? Uh, much better. Wonderful. Glad to hear it. Ryan, how are you? How's the week been? Uh, it's been a good week, and I'm doing well, sir. Ready to talk some movies. Let's cut to it. Sounds like a plan. Have you had the chance to check out anything since we last talked to you? No. Ah, so you've got yourself a couple of things you need to check out this weekend, then. Yes, I do. I understand. All right, well, let's get to it here in your top ten. Not a whole lot to talk about here. We'll just kind of run through the top five pretty quick here. A Most Wanted Man in at number ten. It was a debut for that, but that was also uh, one of those limited release films, so uh, good for them for actually cracking into the top ten. Tammy in at number nine, about ready to fall out of the top ten, it appears. And so it goes. The Michael Douglas, uh, Diane... Keaton film that was supposed to be the romantic comedy debuts to a very lackluster four point six million dollars. Oh, that's just, that's a dirty rotten shame. I didn't know that was a thing that happened. It barely did. <laughs> Transformers: Age of Extinction in at number seven. Sex tape at number six. Planes, fire, and rescue it to uh, number five or drops to number five. In this case, nine and a half million though thirty five point three. Not too bad. And you certainly needed the help. Oh, okay. <laughs> Up to number four, The Purge, Anarchy, ten and a half million, fifty one point nine. I need that to perform much better. Uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes still hanging in there at number three, sixteen point eight million, one hundred and seventy two point five million for that in its couple of weeks of release so far, but knocked out of the number one spot. In at number two, Hercules, debuting twenty nine point eight million dollars. This is a film that Ryan, you certainly want to go see. I haven't heard anything yet on any ratings for it. What do we know? Anything? Uh, I believe it's got like a 63, 64 rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but other than that, I haven't heard too much about it. All right. And in at number one, movie that we kind of panned royally here on the show, but Jeff and I, despite all the fact that we knew that it was a pretty dumb film, kind of had some fun with it. And yes. apparently a lot of other people did too. $43.9 million in its opening weekend, Scarlett Johansson and Lucy. So not a bad uh, start for that film. Never underestimate a solid appreciation for this stupid <laughs> and, yep. and just because it made $43.9 million does not mean that everyone who spent the $43.9 million actually enjoyed watching it. Well, and I would mm. certainly believe that. Here's my other question. Because we have gotten familiar with Scarlett Johansson in the role of Black Widow in the Marvel Universe, most, I mean, she was just seen in Captain America. Obviously, uh, we got to know her in the Avengers. Was this partially because of the fact that she is now well-known as the role of Black Widow and we all wanted to go see her again, or is it something else? No, you hit the nail right on the head. Okay. Yeah, I think she's, if she wants to, is, will be always be able to fall back on the this new found status as a credible action heroine that she has mm-hmm. found herself well, I mean, in. I think if you made a film of just Scarlett Johansson standing in a, in like a, a room like that was just empty for two hours, it would make $40 million. I mean, it's, it's Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, I think that's, some of that's in under the skin, or she's just sort of standing in a room. Yeah, you were you were telling me last yeah. week you were uh, checking that film out. It's not for everyone. That's for darn sure. <laughs> I yeah, I I didn't care for it. No, 
Not I have really. yet to see it. I've heard about it, but I have yet to see it. And because of the fact that he said that it was not for everybody and you said that, I may just have to check it out just because. Um, <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> coming out this week, two films of note. Get On Up stars Chadwick Boseman. You might remember him from the uh, movie 42. Dan Aykroyd, obviously, he's been in many, many things. Telling of the life and times of the famed singer James Brown. With all due respect, James, I believe you're going to be overshadowed by a movie that stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, the voices of Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, and a whole lot of more people in a film called Guardians of the Galaxy. It's about a group of space rejects that ended up banding together, but they're being chased because one of them has stolen a very coveted object. Guardians of the Galaxy. Jeff, you went last when it came to Lucy. You get I to sure go did. first this time. All right, I'm just going to start out by saying this is honestly the, the most fun I've had at the movies this year. Okay. And it was pretty much everything I was expecting and wanting out of this. It was just a, a and I hate to use sort of cliche uh, critic speak, but it was a rollicking fun time at the at the theater. <laughs> and it really was. I Like I said, I've been looking forward to this thing since they announced it, and especially because of Rocket Raccoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were on this from the get-go. When the, the moment they announced they were making a movie out of this, you got excited. Yeah, and he delivered, and then some. And there are a couple of things of uh, performances in there that I wasn't expecting, like Bautista as Drax. He, <laughs> he was awesome. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I mean, it's it's by no means a perfect movie. It's the most unique and unusual Marvel movie so far. And, and um, honestly, I think if, if they didn't have the giant logo at the front of it, a lot of people would have no idea that it's actually a Marvel Universe film. It's just a it's it's just a great time at the movies. I enjoyed it. Like I mean, we were all gut laughing numerous times. So it's a solid eight and a half for me. Eight and a half for Jeff. Yes. Jacob, where are you going? Well, I, I agree with Jeff. It's so much fun. This this movie is fantastic. By the way, it broke. It's the current record holder for 2014 of uh, most money made on opening night, which was 11 million. Um, it's a good sign for you. We'll get back to that later. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is one of those movies you need to take all of the money you have and see this movie <laughs> as many times as you possibly can. Take mortgages out on your house. Take that money and see it as many times. Rob banks and then use that money until you go to jail. The comments made out. by Jacob do not necessarily reflect <laughs> the comments that are felt by the other participants on this show. No, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's great. It's fun. It's funny. Like Jeff said, you could take the Marvel out of this. You could take, you could take the character names and just say this is a, you know, a movie about, you know, just the plot. It's, I mean, it's, the plot and the writing is just good. Okay. It's, it's solid fun. Uh, m- my complaints with the movie are, are so minor. I mean, it's so little. I, I had a little issue with uh, the Nova Core is a little more powerful than the in the comics than they make them out to be in the movie, and that was a little bit of an issue for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a little bit of an issue that could have been a little bigger climax at the end. You know, it was a little uh, a little more attention could have been had. Okay. But uh, other than that, like I say, really, really minor. Really minor. Uh, for me, it's a nine point eight. Wow. All right, David. Well, I, I agree with uh, with Jacob's minor qualms with the movie, as okay. well as I don't think Ronan was quite as fleshed out a villain uh, as I would have liked. Um, but this is the funniest comedy in the last probably six or seven years, and the one of the best action movies in the past six or seven years. Um, I've pretty much come to terms with the fact that these movies have, they're just going to be chapters. They're not really fully formed movies because they don't need to be. They know what they're going to do. They're no, they know they're hanging threads for next time. 8.5 out of 10. Uh, Solid. definitely go check this out. Okay. It's, it's worth your time. All right. So you getting convinced that this is something you need to see, Ryan? Oh, it's, I already know I'm going to see it, but i got two quick questions, though. How does this compare to Star Wars? And number two, as far as Marvel films is concerned, is this film better than X-Men, or is it unfair to compare the two? I'll be more than happy to step up and answer this film is better than X-Men. Agreed. And how does it, how does it compare to Star Wars? It's interesting. There's actually, and, and it ties into my review, now that you mention it. Uh, checking out this movie, I walked in knowing absolutely nothing about this. Jeff, you got excited about Guardians of the Galaxy from the moment that they announced that they were going to be making the film, and I went, who? Right, you know, only because, like mm-hmm. I said, 
They're, they're putting Rocket Raccoon in here? Yeah. I've got to see it. Okay. So I purposely decided I was not going to go check out any of the source material. I wanted to be able to walk into this and not think, okay, you know, Jacob, you mentioned the fact that Novacore in the comics are a little bit stronger than what was portrayed in the film. I didn't want to have any of that preconceived notion. I just wanted to go in, take a, while, take a look at the movie, and just judge it based upon the movie itself. I echo the thoughts of everyone. If you take Marvel off the front of this, what you've got is a nice sci-fi action movie with a good amount of comedy. It stands on its own because, quite frankly, if we hadn't seen Thanos in the uh, uh, credit scene in the Avengers, this wouldn't even tie in to the Avengers universe. Well, you'd also have the Collector because he appeared in... Uh, well, yeah, but that was also a bit. Yeah, that was a bit, but there right. you go. So this movie stands on its own quite nicely. It tells its own story of these characters, how they end up meeting each other, how they end up coming together. It's a great setup here to launch into as you mentioned, David, mm -hmm. the chapters that we know are coming, and we'll get to more on that as we go on through. I really enjoyed it. We were laughing throughout the course of it. It had good action in it. It set itself up to the point where you know probably where we're going to go from here, and I'm not going to give away any spoilers. Go see the film. I saw one reviewer on, uh, I think it was Yahoo.com movie, said, shut up, go see the film. That was his review. I agree. Solid nine, second best film I've seen so far this year. I slotted only behind Captain America, The Winter Soldier. By the way, two entirely different films. Captain America, Winter Soldier, much darker, much more serious. Kind of what you would expect going from the humongous patriotic film that the first Captain America was into this. We fleshed out that character much more. This here... It's just such a good time. You saw little bits of Star Trek, little bits of Star Wars, a little bit of pretty much, if you can think of a sci-fi film on a good side, you see little bits of references in there. It's just fun. And it goes by quick. It really does. And we were talking after the film like we usually do. I need to go back and see it because there's so many things that you miss as you're going through and you laugh or there's so many things that are on the screen that you go, okay, saw that, and then somebody goes, hey, did you see this? Oh, no, I was looking at the other thing in the same scene. Yeah, it goes oh. it goes by quick, and it's a dense film. Yeah, it really is. Not to mention, there's, uh, I, and I've, I, I've caught some of them, but I, I've heard that there's so many hidden things in the collector's room. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You and I were talking about one of those earlier on, Jeff. Right, there's uh, one of the Dark Elves from Thor I noticed in there. Yeah, yeah there's there's also, apparently, and I didn't catch it, but there's also even a reference to Slither in there, which was one of James Gunn's earlier Oh, films. man, I missed that, too. See, got to go and check all this stuff out. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I may, one more thing that I really like about it is that finally there's a, this kind of you know big space adventure movie that isn't winking and nodding at you. It's fun yeah. without making, you know, constant constant winks and, and making fun of itself. You right. know, it's not right. ironic or are yeah. self-aware. It's just, it's it just really goes just fun, man. It just goes and you just have fun with it. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. I'd like to say that Groot, I think, might be my favorite Marvel character now. <laughs> he was awesome. <laughs> he <Yeah>. was. <laughs> but I got to admit, for a wrestler, Dave Bautista, he did a nice turn as an actor. <laughs> you really did. You really are correct about that. It was awesome because his woodenness actually was part of his charm. That There was... No BS. There was no affectation. Yeah, he just went and did it. It was like he, this guy really—he's not an actor. No, and it, it had actually benefited this character. So yeah. between the four of us, I'd say we're looking at a solid, easy nine here. And like I said, for me, second best film I've seen so far this year, and uh, that's that's saying a pretty good amount because we've seen some decent films this year. When you look at movies like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and others, but yeah, this one solidly slotted into the number two slot for me for the year. Two things, uh, two things I want to add to that. First of all. Vin Diesel's best cinematic performance ever. <laughs> yes, it did have a lot of wide range, didn't it? Yeah, uh, for him it was. Um, it made him two, grow as an actor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will say this: as funny as this movie is, and then like I say, it like you exactly like you said, there's gut busting funny through this whole movie. As funny as this is, especially in scenes in the beginning and end, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen a comic book movie that has made me that emotional either. Hmm. Interesting. there are some parts in the very beginning and parts at the end that, like, yeah. heart okay. strings stuff. I see where you're going. And by the way, who in the world goes into a film that's in the Marvel Universe and leaves when the credits come up? 
we complain about this every time, and I don't understand how oh, people haven't learned. We're uh, telling you, every time, folks, there is a scene either in the middle or at the end of the credits, sometimes both. But this time it was like four people. Like, yeah. The, it it's, looks like they're learning, but yeah. we're still looking at them and going, really, you're leaving. Yeah. Not a good way to end your night. And I will say this. I'm not going give to give it away, but don't. let's just say that um, this one... It's worth I, it. I, I heard some people that were going, oh, really? So I was totally on board with it, though. Oh, yeah. I'm all about it. I think it's great. Uh, out in limited release, only one film that I could check out uh, or find anything out about. It's a movie called Calvary starring Brendan Gleeson. I don't know whether it's going to do anything, considering what else we got out there. Coming out in movie theaters next week, you've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Into the Storm, among others. They're both on my radar. One of those two are on my radar. Which one? Both of them. <laughs> Did you guys notice the Ninja Turtles reference in Guardians? I did. I thought yeah. that was fun. Yeah. I like they're playing around. They they enjoying the playing around. Uh all right, here we go. We need to take a break here. We'll take our first break of the day. And when we come back, we will kick off with news about Guardians of the Galaxy. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming, the Entertainment Roundtable on Superstation 101. Ooga chaka ooga 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 chaka ooga 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 chaka ooga 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 chaka ooga 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 I can't stop When we come back from commercial break here on the Entertainment Roundtable, we usually come back from a song that appears on a soundtrack to one of the films either out this week or coming out this week. Seems strange to say, but this song, and if you've watched the previews, you know, is off of the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy, and we're going to use the other. Instead of using a TV theme song, we're going to give you one of the other ones that shows up in the soundtrack as well. And that's where we start. Ryan, with you, Guardians of the Galaxy, just talking about it, hitting theaters this weekend. We recommend go see it without even knowing how successful it was going to be. Disney, which of course owns the Marvel Universe, uh, apparently are planning for a second one, including a release date. Are we right about that? Yes, sir, they are. They are putting the car before the horse. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is going to hit theaters everywhere on July the 28th of 2017. Of course, we say putting the cart before the horse, but Jacob, you just said, uh, give me that stat again about its opening night. Yeah, opening night, $11 million. And I was yeah. reading two or three days ago that it was tracking $70 million for this opening weekend. That's yeah. what Disney was hoping for. I get the funny feeling they're going to make it with ease. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, yeah, and, I, I, safe bet, let's put it and that And let's just say if any of the studio suits saw the movie before it was released, they knew what it was going to do. Yeah, oh, yeah, like, I'm sure. On top of I that, mean, go ahead, Jake. Oh, on top of that, we do know, according to Latino Review, uh, James Gunn has been signed on to write and direct the sequel. If he can get the co-writer that he had there and keep that same attitude with the fun and the action, I think they got. I, I think they're perfect. I think they're set. Yeah, it's 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 worth it. Am I crazy, or did it, did it really seem a lot? Uh, did it have a lot of the uh, dialogue of like Serenity and uh, Firefly? It felt that yeah. way to me. Sure, nice, quick, witty. Yeah, yeah, quick hitting. I like it. Ryan, let's stay right there in the Marvel Universe. And you came across a photo which shows up online, and you know we can trust everything that shows up online. Everything. Uh, that uh, which Marvel films are going to be released on what day. And I want to say this first, Ryan. We talked a little bit about this week that we knew the dates that they were talking about, but they hadn't attached films to it. This one purports to attach films to the dates that we talked about. Yeah, apparently uh, there's this little bit of a list that's been floating around for films such as uh, Black Panther. I mean, of course, we already know that Doctor Strange is about to happen. Now they're saying they have a sequel name for Thor. It's Ragnarok, whatever that means. And then other films as well, other projects they want to work on. But it hasn't been confirmed by Marvel yet. So this is probably all just a farce. And, Jacob, you thought last night after seeing Guardians of the Galaxy that that is totally wrong. Yeah, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I haven't. this would have been reported on one of the major entertainment sites and i haven't seen it anywhere on any of those uh and second um they've already said that thanos is going to be the villain for uh, avengers 3 and that that uh picture that we saw uh has um has the storyline for avengers 3 being civil war and that thanos does not fit into the civil war would be a cool story but thanos doesn't fit into that and so gotcha. i don't see that that could be a possibility. Okay. Uh, trailer time here. Jacob, we're going to start with you. They got uh, Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, which we finally have seen a full trailer as opposed to the teasers we've gotten. What do you think? And we'll go around the table to those who have seen it. Yeah, well, uh, it, it's still kind of a teaser trailer. They're still calling it a teaser trailer, but uh, 
basically we see Jennifer Lawrence come. It's it's more of Jennifer Lawrence's side to all of this. Uh, she's seeing what's going on in District 13 and the rebellion and is basically being asked to help. Uh, we get to see uh, um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, probably the last time we'll get to see him on film um, in, in this uh, trailer. And we also see uh, the first uh, of Julianne Moore playing President Coyne. So um, I, it doesn't definitely looks good to me. I mean, it's it's the Hunger Games. It's going to be good. David, it looks fun. I um, I'll see it, but I already knew I was going to see it because of the first two. All right, Jeff. Um, you know, for a teaser trailer, it looks fine, and hopefully, you know, if the if the script is good, and they actually can get across some of the ideas that were in the books that I felt they didn't originally get across so well. Right. It, it might it, it may be a, a great movie. Okay, Ryan. For a teaser trailer, I think it looks great. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> this one, I think, though, would probably be, and I'm trying to remember the book right offhand. This one, I think, is going to be the more action out of the two. I think this is where where we're really going to start to set up uh, her being the mocking Jay, and we start to see the Civil War. I'm just curious as to whether they're going to be able to make that work. I know that there's a lot of setup that you're going to need to do if they stick as close to the book as I think they will making the two films out of it. So I'm a little curious as to find out whether this one's going to be the weaker of the two films or whether it's going to be the second one. Uh, but from what I've seen so far, I love the first two teasers with the all-white and President Snow sitting there. This one, obviously, a much darker look at it. But uh, again, yeah, from what I've seen, I like the looks of it. And I, I kind of with you, David, I was going to go see it anyway, but I've enjoyed <laughs> the first two films, so I'm looking forward to it. Over the past few years, several films charting the lives of well-known singers, including one this week about James Brown, talked about it just a couple of minutes ago, and we talked about this one a couple of months ago. There's plans, apparently, to do a film about the rap group N.W.A. Jacob, filling out the cast a little bit more, what do you know? Yeah, well, we're, uh, we're making this, they're making this biopic called Straight Outta Compton. They have now cast Turns' Aldous Hodge to play M.C. Wren and The Walking Dead's Neil Brown Jr. to play DJ Yellow. They're joining um, O'Shea Jackson Jr., Corey Hawkins, and Jason Mitchell uh, to play, respectively, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and Eazy-E. Uh, and so uh, looking at a August 14, 2015 release for this biopic. Are they going to have the actual members of NWA at this in this movie at any point? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, but they, you know... They have been, uh, I mean, they're all attached to the movie, so it wouldn't surprise me if they have some kind of, you know, something to do with it. Right. I wonder how it feels for Ice Cube, someone who started out as a rapper and has moved into acting, to see someone acting as him right. when he was a rapper. When he was a rapper. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, like, wait, Ice Cube can't play Ice Cube? You know? <laughs> yeah, really. Interesting stuff. Uh, speaking of biopics, uh, this one about a boxer, not Muhammad Ali. Jacob, tell me who Jamie Foxx has signed up to play. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. But <laughs> Jamie Foxx is now is, is set to uh, play Mike Tyson in an untitled biopic. Um, so that that's going to happen. Is there enough helium around to make Jamie Foxx's voice that high? I'm going to make him a girlfriend. The Mike Tyson story. Yeah, I think you could go back to In Living Color and see that he he could do it. Yeah, I guess he could do it on a regular basis. I don't know. I don't. Mm. I mean, I remember when you know Will Smith portrayed Ali and actually did a pretty good job doing it. Actually, yeah. but uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's not exactly what anyone would call a lovable character. Or right, not exactly the person I would want to make a bio. So they're gonna go the like the Johnny Cash route and just make him out to be a lout. You almost have to. Well, that's the thing. He's not the most interesting kid. He was surrounded by people who took advantage of him, but he wasn't, yeah. you know, I mean, the other most than the fact that he, person. Other than the fact he smacked Robin Givens around a lot and then decided to bite the ear or, or tried to bite Evander Holyfield's ear off, I'm not really all that certain where we're going to go with this film. You see, you have to respect other people's invisibles. Right. I'm making my girlfriend. <laughs> by the way, and I, I didn't post this, but Adult Swim is making a... Um, Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson mystery. <laughs> Saw that picture. It's an animated what? Scooby-Doo ripoff where Mike Tyson is the star. <clears throat> yes, I saw that. Mike Tyson mysteries. Ooh, you know, wow. It's present-day Mike Tyson, too, with the face tats and everything. Philip Middling Kid. 
Uh, later this year, we're going to get an animated film called Big Hero 6. Jacob, they've released a bit of a, sh- and it is really short, a teaser. Did you learn anything from it? Uh, not a whole lot. A little bit more about the the robot, which is, whose name is Baymax, if, if you hadn't heard yet. Um, kind of, I think the idea is that Baymax is supposed to be kind of like a robot that is like a helper robot. And you get the idea that this kid decides to take on you know, and that's when he decides to make armor for this, you know, helper robot. Basically, we saw the uh, we saw the full trailer for it last night before Guardians of the Galaxy. It actually looks like it might be a pretty funny film. It yeah, it looks good. It's it's a weird trailer. It, it's odd. It's different, but it 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 looks good. I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Let's go to you now. <laughs> <laughs> one of two trailers that I'm actually going to give you. One of these you were very, very excited about when it first came out. The Chris Nolan film Interstellar. We finally saw a full, this one dealing with the plot. Yes. Trailer. Your thoughts? <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I, I'm ready for November to get here. Yeah? Because of that. You know, The Hobbit, yay, whatever. I'm really Hunger Games, yeah. Eh, sure, whatever. <laughs> Interstellar, that's, that's the one I'm looking forward to. I mean, you got, like I said, Nolan, you got uh, Matthew McConaughey, Michael Caine in there. The red-headed lady whose name I can't remember right now. For the Anne Hathaway? No. <laughs> Anne no. Hathaway, she's in She there. is in there, yes. Jessica Chastain. Heck of a cast. Great premise. It just looked... Uh, I'm excited for it. We finally got to see some of the more space... The first teaser was more here on Earth. Yeah. This one, we finally get to go with the mountain space a little bit. Right. It, it's looking good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ryan, what'd you think? Uh, Did it's you take a look Chris at it? Nolan. I'm a Nolan fan through yeah. and through since 05 when Batman Begins came out, so sign me up, man. I can't wait to see this one. David? Uh, it's Nolan. I'm a Nolan detractor through and through. Um, it looks like it's going to be an okay film until it ends with nothing. Like it will ha- You won't know what happened because Nolan can't give you an ending. He never gives you a good ending. Did mm. they really splash down, or was did they crash down, or did they evolve and and go into another <laughs> realm? Or so, you know, it'll be something stupid like that. Uh, well, uh, so are you are you going to see this? I will probably eventually see it, yeah. You're not hyped up to go see it, I'm though. not hyped up. I might, yeah. I, you know, I might go see it with you guys just <laughs> just to bug Jeff. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I'm interested. Uh, to me, the trailer is, I still think the trailer lacks a little bit. I, and, and I think that's because they are intentionally holding back parts of the plot. Oh, I'm sure they are. And they and, will in the movie as I well. Think like bigger things. <laughs> I think there are bigger things that we're going to see in this movie than what we're even beginning to see in the in these trailers. I think it's actually one of the trailers that actually doesn't show you much about what's going on. And so I'm, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Um, I'm hoping that there's more than just what we've seen from the trailers. I think that it looks I think it looks great. I, the, the shots that we saw of them in space look fantastic. What I'm thinking, though, is that this is going to be um, the environmentalist's film of the year. Uh, I'm, I'm, still gonna see I'm it. trying to figure out exactly where they are going with the plot because I haven't read up much on it. But looking at this, hey, apparently we've destroyed the world. We got to go find another place so we can go destroy it because oh, we're man. just humans with a bunch of you know, you know, we're idiots. So, but I will see it because again, it looks pretty. Uh, Ryan, over to you since we're talking trailers. Uh, one for the upcoming, apparently third film in the Night in the Museum series. Where did I miss that they were making this third film? Yeah, it's been uh, it has been talked about very much uh, at all. But Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb, going to rejoin with Ben Stiller, Robin Williams, Owen Wilson, Steve Coogan, among others. Uh, it's going to take place overseas in uh, London, an epic quest to save the magic that's encompassed within that tablet that helps those exhibits come to life before it is gone forever. It's going to hit theaters everywhere on December the nineteenth. I saw the second Night at the Museum. I wasn't all that thrilled. I'm probably I'll wait on this one. I'm just not excited. Yeah, I never even saw the second one. I haven't seen any of them, but from what I understand, Ben Stiller's completely harried and worn out by these exhibits coming to life. Why would he want to save the magic that brings them? I would have smashed the tablet to a billion pieces. Mm. That would have been the end of it. There you go. Jacob? <laughs> uh, not, I've never been a big fan of this series. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> In the minority, then. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm not excited. I, I think it was the second one. The first one I thought was actually pretty good. second one is, uh, yeah. I love the second one much better than the first. Really? Oh, it was much better, man. You had all those extra new characters and a cameo. I mean, it's really good stuff. I thought they tried too hard. Uh, Jacob, go to you. Second trailer for the film The Maze Runner. Saw it again before Guardians of the Galaxy last night. What are you thinking? Uh, Well, it is a little interesting. I mean, you know, basically, for for those who don't know anything about this, uh, it's 
these kids who are trapped in this maze and they're kind of have trying to find a way out. Uh, but we see kind of one of the big, I guess, villains, you would say, of the film in the Grievers, or what they're called. Right. And basically they are, from what I could tell in the trailer, it looked kind of like mechanical scorpions, maybe. Uh, maybe I may be missing on that uh, that design, but that's kind of because they're, they're in there and they're quick and you don't get to really see a good look at them. But um, definitely... I, to me, this is one of those trailers that, like, the more I see, the less interested I'm getting. Oh, okay. But, but I mean, it, it doesn't look bad. It just, I'm not, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sold anymore on this. Ryan, I'm in. I mean, I'm intrigued. I mean, kids trapped, and if you run through the maze, the doors start to close. You can either end up dead or stranded in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm in. All right, Jeff. It looks like Cube for young adults. Yeah. Sure. Okay, David. You never heard of Cube? You know no. what I'm talking about? Cube, no. an old sci-fi movie about mm. these people who wake up in, in this, basically a cube with different rooms and and everything's booby-trapped and certain times, like every hour, the rooms change and they don't know why they're there. Hmm. I might have to check that out. Yeah. It's interesting. Okay. This are seems are like you this, in on this? Um, yeah. I, I've never read the books. I've never really heard of it. it I mean, it looks kind of interesting. I might see it. It depends. Gotcha. David? It looks like the Hunger Games trapped inside of a Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> wow. Hello. I, I said this right after the trailer ended last night. Uh, Jeff, I think it was you that was sitting next to me, and I looked at you and I said, that movie looks like the film I wanted Divergent to be. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I have no further version, but I think it's funny. I never saw Divergent, so. Hey, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, let's go to you, Jeff. Mad Max. Mm. He's back. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? This movie can I, I want this movie here now. When I'm is going it supposed to, to come out? Next year sometime. I don't okay. know. Have a specific date. But I want to wear this movie like a warm coat. I want to wallow all up in it. Are you kidding me? George Miller coming back with Max back in the desolate wasteland that is the future. Vehicular mayhem on a grand scale. Pretty much every time you saw an object hit another object in that trailer, guess what? They actually hit two objects together. <laughs> they did some digital backgrounds here and there, yes. But if a car hits another car... Those are two cars actually exploded. That's metal mayhem place. right there. I am so pumped for this. Yeah? I love The Road Warrior, one of my favorite movies of the 80s. And Thunderdome, eh, the first Mad Max is a little crazy. This looks like a return to form, man. This looks like Road Warrior on steroids David? with Charlie's their own. There you go, David. I've never been much for the series. Um, I don't know why I should care about this movie because I don't know where it fits in with the canon of the others. It's and I don't, even, I don't know if it's a remake. Here. I don't know what it is. Um and I don't really care. I'll probably see it. <laughs> wow, the excitement over there is just it's amazing. I do I do enjoy the idea of practical effects over special uh, the special effects. Oh yeah, effects. trust me, there were a lot of cars that got fenders crunched in this uh in the trailer there. So for the film, yeah, I would guarantee it. Ryan? Uh for someone who's unfamiliar with this franchise, I mean it looks kind of intriguing, but there really wasn't much explanation at all in this first trailer, so I need to see another one before I make any more judgments. Gotcha, Jacob. Uh I mean it's post apocalyptic Post-apocalyptic wasteland fun. I mean, yeah, it's typical Mad Max. Yep, it's typical Mad Max. I'm in. Uh, one more trailer. This one uh, going to wrap up the Hobbit series, the Battle of the Five Armies, set for release December 17th. We saw it at the beginning there. Ryan, have you seen it? Uh, I have seen the trailer for this film. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Uh, I saw the first Hobbit film. Not very impressed at all. But you I haven't have been that impressed the with the series, one, so though. I, so I don't know much. Yeah, you haven't been impressed with the series that much. Yeah, not really. I mean, my journey to Middle Earth ended in 03, so, you know. Gotcha. Jacob? Uh, I mean, it looks good. I mean, I, I don't know what, how much I can say it more than it. I mean, it looks good. I mean, if you've liked the first two, it'll be good. If you didn't like the first two, it's not going to be good. David? Uh, I've never been interested in any of it. The uh, Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. I watched about 10, 15 minutes of Lord, the first Lord of the Rings and fell asleep. I've never been able to make it through. There you go. Jeff? So. Uh, like Jacob said, I don't think they'd even have to release any trailers for this. Just sort of, let, you know, a month before, just let people know when it's coming out. I mean, it's sold to who it's going to be sold yeah. to at this yeah. point. Yeah, they've gotten their audience whittled down to the people that are going to go see it. It does look good. It's it's the quality is there. You can tell it's Peter Jackson. He's got his hand in it. Um, the second one on this, I think, was a step up from the first. I hope that they continue that trend of stepping up from one movie to the next. There really were some cool things in there, though. There were. The battle rams, you know, drawers on the backs of rams mm -hmm. and smog yeah. or smog or however you want to call it. 
All right. We got to take a break, but we still have some more movie stuff that we got to get to and a whole lot of TV stuff. We'll see how much of it we can get to in our final segment of this version of the Entertainment Roundtable. They do all their own stunts. The Entertainment Roundtable on Superstation 101. Welcome back in. More music from Guardians of the Galaxy, Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky. We're going to get a sequel, Jacob, to a film that... How long ago was it that Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out? About a decade? It's been a while. Yeah, but we're getting a sequel, huh? That was mid-90s. Was it really? Was it that long ago? I don't think it was that long ago. I know it's been at least a... It's, it's got to have been Hold about please. a decade. I think it was like 97 to 99, somewhere in there. Yeah? All right. But we're going to get a... We're going to get a... Uh, we're going to get a, uh, a sequel here. What's the details? Uh, yeah. Uh, the Weinstein Company is backing this. Uh, the a re, a sequel to this is going to be directed by... And I am going to completely butcher this, but Wu Ping Yuan. Close enough. Uh, hopefully that's right. Uh, we've we've found out that uh, Glee star Harry Shum Jr. has been cast as one of the leads. Um, let's see, he will be playing Tai Fang in the movie. Okay. And that's pretty much all we know. All right. You said 1997 to 99? I think so. Jeff just looked it up. 2000. Wow. Whoa. I was so wrong. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Uh, and then there's a sequel to a movie I didn't care for, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Wow. The stars are interested in coming back, Jacob? Yeah, well, uh, this isn't. Have, I mean, we have, we don't know that this is actually going to be made, but uh, Mira Sorvino was being interviewed recently and basically said that she's been in touch with all the people who made the first one and that that everyone is interested. Um, so it's possible that it could get made. I, I don't. I mean, I could care less if they do or not. I pray that they don't. Actually, that was not a good film. Not at all. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Jacob here. Uh, sequel or reboot? I guess it's a reboot. The Mummy? Yeah, it's kind of it's a reboot. I, mean, I don't know if I'd say it's a, it's a reboot, really. Uh, it's kind of almost a different, completely different thing where The Mummy was, you know, uh, I don't know. Basically, this is a one of the Universal is trying to do movies based on their the big um, monster movies. Oh, so this isn't the Brendan Fraser film. This is the old monster movie. Right. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, more the uh, Boris Karloff. Yeah. Mummy. So gotcha. They, we have found out that they have signed Alex Kurtzman to direct um, this movie. So, no. don't know. He was supposed to be doing a Venom spinoff movie from the Spider-Man universe. Was still, and that, that's kind of up in the air now. Um, well, this guy's so starting we to know. rack up his directing jobs, though. I mean, yeah. you you mentioned Venom, isn't he? Isn't he the one supposed to be doing the third Star Trek film? Orsi is. Oh, it's Orsi. Okay, I always get the two mixed up because they're so connected at the hip for the most part. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, apparently not. Not movie wise, anyway. Uh, Jacob, there's a movie uh, set to come out called Meadowland. What's this about? Uh, yeah, this is an uh, I mean, Olivia Wilde um, movie. Basically, she is producing and starring in this movie, and we now know that Elizabeth Moss and Luke Wilson have joined on. Uh, it's basically going to be um, Wilde and Wilson. Uh, Olivia Wilde and Luke Wilson are, uh, are a couple, and they're dealing with their son's disappearance. Uh, Luke Wilson's going to play a, a police officer, and Olivia Wilde is going to go basically crazy trying to find um, and do dangerous things to try to find their son. Um, yeah. so that sounds crazy. awful. Yeah, and those not really all that thrilled on the premise. I mean, we kind of saw that with, uh, gosh, what was the film that just came out with the guys? Prisoners. Uh, was it? Was that the one that had... Um, Wolverine and, and yeah. Rhodey? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah I mean, we, and, it's like, it's, and it's a premise we've seen about five times already. Right. I mean, this is not like a new premise. It's not going to break any new ground. This, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, taken. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Ryan, one more note here. Plans by IMAX for a re-release of a film that actually came out 20 years ago this year and netted Tom Hanks an, ask, an Oscar. What's the deal? Yes, sir. The classic Forrest Gump is going to hit IMAX for one week only, starting on September the 5th. One Why? week, September the 5th. I'm to down. To celebrate the 20th anniversary, obviously. Yeah, that's why. Wake up, man. There you go. I'm in. For those of you that haven't seen the film on the big screen, now's your opportunity. Why would you do it in IMAX? Who cares? Dude, IMAX is awesome. What's wrong with you? Just to make it bigger. 
Duh. <laughs> Makes it bigger and better, man. Dear God, uh, make me a bird. <laughs> Uh, it's just like peas and carrots again. Uh, out on Blu-ray or DVD next Tuesday, several films might be considered good. Maybe by somebody. Divergent, God's Not Dead, Need for Speed, and Oculus all come out. Uh, TV series collectors, you got season, season 7 of Californication, Season 5 of Community, and Season 2 of something called Last Tango in Halifax. All right, then. You ever seen that show? No. Okay, me either. All right, then. You even know what network it's on? I do not. There you go. Uh, news begins with NBC, Ryan. As far as TV stuff is concerned, we'll start off with the hit show Blacklist, getting some new blood into the season. Uh, got some casting additions going on. What's up? Yes, sir. You got uh, Mary Louise Parker is going to take on the role of Naomi Highland. She is a woman who is connected to Red Rennington somehow, but no other details on that. Also, you got House of Cards uh, alum Mazan Morano. She's been cast as the character Tamar Katzman, a former Mossad agent, an incredibly intuitive spy who goes head to head with Mr. James Spader himself, Raymond Reddington. The all new season of The Blacklist is going to hit NBC Monday night, September the 22nd at 10 9 Central. Jacob, NBC about ready to debut a show called Aquarius? Yeah, we, we've talked about this a little bit before. This is David Duchovny's new vehicle that he, is, he has is going to be leading. Uh, he, it's a 60s drama about a cop who, being played by David Duchovny, who's going to go undercover to track Charles Manson and the Manson family. Oh, yeah. Um, and they have now cast the original's Claire Holt to be the opposite lead to David Duchovny. So. We've seen movies or TV shows that have been set in history like that, and they've mm, kind of limited success when it comes to that. I wonder if this one's going to have enough. There's not many places this thing can go. Not really. Unless no. they're aliens. But we've, <laughs> yeah. also seen, we've also seen period dramas. There are you know, things where it's you know, historical-type things that have done quite well. So. Yeah. I want to believe. Yeah, yeah you know, like uh, Sleepy Hollow. I mean, it's yeah. based on real history. Right. And it's awesome. Well, that's, yeah. that's fact. Right. <laughs> More casting additions, Jacob, to you and over to ABC with Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They have added an actor probably best known for a role in a recent Bond film. Yeah, they have, and again, I'm going to butcher this name. I'll do it. Uh, uh, they've added Quantum of, Quantum of Solace's Simon Cassian, Cassian, uh, Cassian Ides, something along those Just lines. say who he played in Quantum of Solace and move on. Uh, yeah, I don't even know that I know that answer. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he will, uh, he's going to play Bakshi, a confident right-hand man who's not afraid to do the dirty work is the description I have for him. Well, that. we do have to have Ralph? a... Yeah, Ralph. We need to have somebody, I guess, replace Agent Ward, don't we? Yeah. Ralph That's Bakshi. true, because Agent Ward is dead. Ralph uh, Bakshi wasn't afraid totally to do some dead. dirty work. Dude, he may as well be dead. Well, there's that. Uh, and a, one addition, apparently one exit, or is this actress pulling double duty on ABC, Jacob? We're talking about Alina Satine. Apparently she's not only, she's been in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but she's picked up another gig, or is she leaving S.H.I.E.L.D.? Well, we don't really know if she, I mean, because she was only really a guest on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or in a recurring character when she played Lorelai, uh, the sorceress, um, so we don't know if if she is if she's no longer going to be on Agents of Shield, but she has uh, also accepted a recurring role in the ABC show Revenge. Okay, so just recurring so, roles. So she probably will just bounce back and forth then. Yeah, probably so. You know, I would imagine you sign on for any Marvel property, even as a guest star, you're signing a contract for nine different movies <laughs> at this yeah, at this I time. Mean, it's, it's Eight years of TV and five movies. Yeah, the likelihood that they that they never use that character or lie again is probably pretty pretty slim. I would imagine so. Ryan, ABC is where we're going to stay. We're going to move over to a show that you like Once Upon a Time. A couple of new cast members who apparently are going to play roles from the animated film Frozen. They're Apparently they're going to make a whole theme out of this, right? Apparently so. They have uh, cast the character of Prince Hans from Shameless. Actor Taylor, uh, excuse me, Tyler Jacob Moore is going to take on that role as well as Lord of the Rings, John Reese davies is going to be added as pa uh, Pabby the Troll King. So basically because he did Lord of the Rings and played a dwarf, now all of a sudden he's pigeonholed. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, CBS, they got a show coming up this week entitled Stalker. Is it this week that's coming uh, no, out, Jim? I believe that's in the fall. In the fall? Okay. Either way, it's, uh, it's going to start Dylan McDermott, Maggie Q, Jacob. Tell me a little bit about the show and apparently some of the people, uh, some of the other people that are signed on for this. Well, basically, the show is kind of going to be de detectives from a threat assessment unit who investigate stalking cases, therefore the name Stalker. Um, pretty pretty simple. Uh, but they've also cast Warren Cole 
uh, in a recurring role where he will play Detective Trent Wilkes, who is a lead detective in the Robbery Homicide Division of uh, the LAPD, who also has a turf war with uh, Dylan McDermott's character named Jack. And they've also added Eric Stockland, who will play a recurring uh, role as uh, Harry, okay. an introverted college sophomore. Dylan needs to recover from the failed mini event series as it turned out to be hostages. I wonder if this is going to be that vehicle for him. Speaking of CBS summer show, it's entitled Extend. It stars Halle Berry, apparently not performing quite up to snuff, Jacob. Yeah, no, they they haven't been doing as well, and they thought that, that um, Big Brother would be a good lead-in for it, but apparently it has not been been doing very well, and, and it's a quite expensive uh, show to produce with Halle Berry starring. And so they are moving it from the 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern to the 9 o'clock East, or Central, 10 o'clock Eastern slot on Wednesdays. So what's it going to uh, follow now? Uh, I don't all this somewhere, but I... Well, I, I can kind of understand. Uh, people that watch Big Brother, they could care less about Extant. Right, yeah, it doesn't... I don't see in this article what it will be following. Yeah, I've got the first three episodes of my DVR, and every time I go to be like, what am I going to watch or not? I just... Extant. Skip right Next. over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what, why. <laughs> One more note on CBS, Jacob, and this is uh, dealing with the comedy The Big Bang Theory. We've talked about the fact that the stars are not under contract yet, and apparently there's trouble in paradise. Yeah, the last we've heard is uh, they were supposed to, um, on the 30th, they were supposed to go back into production, uh, but because of the contract negotiations, they have uh, delayed uh, delayed production so don't know what's going on basically for those who don't know um jim parsons people want him to be paid more because he's a three-time emmy winner and the kind of the fan favorite uh the rest of the cast don't feel like that he should be getting a bigger you know paycheck than the rest of them and they all kind of want the same thing so there's a kind of children paradise okay got it yeah there's there's strife Strife. Uh, CW hit show Arrow slated to add character Wildcat. Ryan, who's set to portray him? Uh, Yes, sir. That would be J.R. Ramirez. He's going to take on the role of Ted Wildcat Grant, third season of Arrow. He was introduced, uh, he will be introduced on the show in season three, but we haven't had too much information on his role. But apparently, uh, back in his heyday, he was a member of the Justice Society of America. He was a mentor and trainer of the mass vigilantes, including black canary so this is going to be interesting when arrow season three hits the cw this fall so there's a chance this guy might move up into the movies as well because aren't we supposed to be working towards a justice league film they're not doing that now no they've already said that they're they're keeping their tv and movie universes separate right mistake or not total mistake but whatever yeah that's that's your opinion um I don't know yet. We'll see. If they give us a cool flash in the movies, I'll be fine with it. All right. Ryan, you say it's mis- it's not a mistake. Why? No, because four million people watch Arrow every week. That's not enough to, for moviegoers. And moviegoers aren't going to know who Arrow and The Flash are because not enough of them watch the CW Network show to begin with. Sounds like a missed opportunity to try and promote the show then, doesn't it? Yeah. At the same time, we'll probably one of the biggest movies of the year will star a talking tree and a raccoon that no one knew about. until. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. It, 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 just because it has a small following, if you introduce Arrow and say Flash, even if they're from the TV show, into a movie that has Superman and Batman, right? You know, people will go to see Superman and Batman and these other guys, yeah. regardless. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. At the same time, I don't care as long as they, if they give us Flash in the movies, even if it's different from the TV version. If it's good, I don't. Whatever, it's not going to bother. Yeah, me. you're just worried about the quality. Correct. I uh, got gotcha. you. Um, I'm going to only mention a couple more things here, Jacob. We're going to talk USA and TNT here, mainly because we're talking about renewals or cancellations. Covert Affairs, what's the deal there? Uh, Covert Affairs. Uh, They have now cast uh, Sean Doyle in a recurring uh, guest role. Uh, He'll be playing Alexandra Belenko, a Georgian diplomat educated in the U.S. and celebrated for his work with charitable organizations worldwide, um, but maybe a little more sinister. Um, than what we believe, than what what is known. Uh, you may know him uh, more recently for being in Fargo. He's been in Twenty Four. He's had big, uh, was in Big Love. So okay. And TNT, Jacob got plans for the show Cold Justice. 
Uh, yeah, they have uh, renewed uh, Cold Justice for a third season and uh, another uh, batch of ten episodes. I've never watched one episode of that show. Cold How the justice. heck is that actually making anything? I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah, really. <laughs> I thought Revenge was cold. <laughs> it's a dish best served cold. It oh, is. gotcha. There you That's go. an old Klingon proverb. I want That's what I justice. Uh, Jeff. Steve. You're not hurting, man. We turn our attention over here to the uh, Summer Movie League draft that we did. Oh, are we? You just continue to rack up the bucks, man. Oh, do I? With Lucy coming out and $58 million as of when, Jacob, yesterday? Uh, probably Wednesday. If Wednesday, I okay. $773.4 million. Oh, my goodness gracious. Second, a lot of scratch. Second place, <laughs> far, far behind, <laughs> is me, $608.8 million. All five of my films have come out. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably dead in the water. Third up on the list would be Josh hanging in there, $511 million. He's still got two films yet to go next week's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the film Let's Be Cops. So we'll have to see where that goes. Coming in in fourth place, let me make sure I get this right, uh, Jacob, $475 million, but you got an ace in the hole, my friend. Yeah, if it can do three hundred. dollars I, I, I have a chance. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to need it to do 300. He's got Guardians of the Galaxy this week. Uh, then you've got uh, David in fourth with The Expendables 3 coming out two weeks from now. You're at $314 million. Ryan, you're bringing up the rear, my friend, but you got Sin City a Dame to Kill for, but you're needing that one to make some serious cash. You're only sitting at $308 million, my friend. Great. <laughs> we can find you online. Where can we find you online, Ryan? Uh, at Facebook at Ryan Matthews and also on Twitter at Ryan RPM 5 All right. Join us on the Facebook page, The Entertainment Roundtable, as well. You are a contributor to that, uh, Ryan. We appreciate it. Jacob, so are you. We appreciate that very much and your participation in the show, sir. David, we can find you online, too. Where? Yes, sir. I am currently putting up weekly uh, videos at maladjusted.tv. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate the time, my friend.